everyone and uh, welcome to a new video. Getting fresher, first time in uh, tights and thermals. Today I'm on my Velobil McLaren and it's been uh, quite a while so I had to address a couple of points. First of all I haven't done a review of this bike, I just clocked 2600 kilometers, slightly more than uh, 1500 miles but recently I haven't used it so much because I got concentrated on the canyon, optimizing the position, adding upgrades. So yes, I need to address why I haven't ridden the Velobil so much lately. If you have watched my previous videos about the build process of this bike, you know that it wasn't plain sailing. I did have a couple of issues now and then. But yes, I have to say, the reason why I've not been riding this bike so much lately is not down to the fact that I'm not enjoying riding it. And uh, yes, I do really like this bike a lot, actually. This is an extremely capable bicycle, very fast. And uh, overall, he came out at a, an extremely affordable package. It's definitely a quite a unique proposition. Velobuild is a, a direct brand. They sell from China and they do have an offering where, yes, some frames that are suspiciously close to some major brands. And this is no exception. So this bike here is very close to a specialized bench. And I have to say one of the very best design that Specialized has ever introduced. Not only that, it's actually better than that. Because at that time Specialized offered this bike with a quirky rim brake system. The aerodynamic brakes, they were very inefficient. But the frame itself was fantastic. It was one of the first generation of aerodynamic bikes super fast and this velo build offers the best of both worlds because the frame itself has got the same design characteristics plus it got very simple braking so i could adapt my one of my components very easily and get a very fast bike relatively lightweight with a very small investment and this is really one of the key aspects that made me buy this bike. 500 pounds for the frame. You could also add for 50 dollars the paint. And uh, I came up with this uh, Formula One <laughs> motorsport based theme with the McLaren uh, colors. Only maybe the older of you will remember Prost and Senna. I'm not that keen on buying a fake bike if you like, but this was uh, kind of justified for me because yes, there's nothing else on the market within the same characteristics. And it also helped me with my project of comparing a narrow bike and a traditional bike. Yes, because this Velo build has got the same stack and reach of my Canyon Ultimate. And originally I rode this one with exact same wheels and uh, same group set. So I haven't done the video yet, but in my mind I do have clear what the differences are between the two type of bikes and uh, where each of them has got their own uh, advantages. Focusing on the aero concept then I got slightly deeper wheels, this vision, I put the 5339 chain ring to increase the speed on the flats and I have to say I really really enjoyed riding the bike. Naturally it's had the best performance in the flat and rolling terrain where you can really push for the highest speed that you can achieve and you do feel the benefit of the aerodynamic frame. The initial niggles I have when I built a bike, well, when I tried to build a bike because eventually I got uh, the workshop at Bicycle to do it, were the threads of the bottom bracket. Yes, it was uh, quite dirty, so I tried to screw it in myself and uh, it wasn't working. It wasn't a major issue for the bike shop to do it. The second element was the slippage of the seat post. Yes, this was quite annoying for quite a while. 
because it was coming down and uh, I couldn't find a solution. I kept putting tape inside, uh, no matter how much carbon paste I put it in. And uh, eventually I found out that the vibration of the bolt here were slowly undoing the torque and that was just enough for the clamp not to hold the seat post anymore. So I applied some Loctite to the threads and I never had the slippage again. So something else you can learn throughout the process. The major issue I have to say was the clearance on the rear wheel. Yes, because this bike has an older generation design, it does have very small clearance. It is designed for up to 25 seat tyres, but still with my prime wheels, the tyre was rubbing the inside of the chainstay and it was quite annoying looking at the frame getting eaten a bit by bit. I ended up having the wheel redished and also now I'm running at 23 C tires. I don't uh, actually see any more rubbing. Still, nonetheless, the tires are running very close to the chain stays. The frame, however, is straight. The bike handles extremely well. It's got a very stable um, platform. I rode this uh, up to 70K in, on the descent, so I don't feel uh, unsafe. The comfort is great part maybe for the fact that the carbon is um, not the highest standard I think this is a 700 this kind of construction tend to absorb vibration a little bit better so yes you do have a little bit more weight but at the same time it's not as harsh as the top tier bikes now the main question is why I have not been riding this bike that much lately this is because I tune the position on the Canyon a little bit better moved the saddle ever so slightly forward and you can tell here the reason why I'm going to abandon this bike. Yes, the saddle is all the way forward, close if not beyond the stop sign on the rails and this is because the bike geometry is, uh, yes, the same for stuck and reach. That means that from the bottom bracket forward, the bike is exactly the same as the Canyon Ultimate. The rear end is ever so slightly longer, so almost one centimeter. So to reach the exact same position that I have on the Canyon, I do have to slide the saddle all the way forward. There's no more adjustment left. That doesn't mean that I am uncomfortable or I cannot ride the bike. So actually, now coming back to the bike after a few weeks i feel great the bike is uh, fast responsive really really a joy to ride but what i'm going to do now because this is a aero bike i want to push harder the differences between uh, this one and the canyon so where this bike has to be optimized for fast speed having the two bikes so close it doesn't really make sense Having considered the geometry, I thought that a size smaller could be more beneficial for me. Yes, because with a smaller size, I could reach the same position compared to the bottom bracket with um, the saddle that is not at the end of its rails. The bike is uh, going to be ever so slightly lighter and uh, in comparison, lower and more aerodynamic. So what I did is, yes, I got the exact same frame from VeloBuild. I'm going to swap all the components from this one to the new frame. At these prices, £450 for the new frame. I got already all the components I need. I thought, why not? Let's play and see how a smaller size with a longer stem in a more aggressive position is going to come out. Unfortunately, I'm going to lose these beautiful colors. The new frame is uh, plain silver. I do have in mind another motorsport theme uh, livery, but I'm not sure whether I'm going to do it or not. This was really a very, very nice project. I'm going to miss it a lot. I paid for the bike myself. Velobil were kind enough to throw the paint in, about $50. But yes, I am not <laughs> getting any freebies. Well. Apart from uh, the kit I'm wearing, my good friend from Sirocco sent me this uh, beautiful kit. And as usual, if you would like to shop for Sirocco, you can uh, use my link to get automatically transported to 
a version of the website where prices are automatically reduced by a further 10%. Yes, Sirocco always run a strong discount campaign, but with my link, even more. <laughs> I'm very grateful for your support as usual. Yes, I'm very excited for this new project. I love this bike. I feel that it's a great complement with the Canyon Ultimate I already have. So a all-around bike and a narrow bike plus a winter one for the commute. I think it's the best setup. If the smaller frame with the low front end doesn't work, I'll come back to the McLaren frame and start all over again. Actually, this feels really great. I'm not sure if I made the right decision. Time will tell. For now, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.